Shalom Israel. This is Brother Yahweh All with a lesson on how to get better with precepts. What you see here is my trusty Bible and Apocrypha, right? The binding is wore out. All right. They've been through some things. They've been put to good use. A lot of people say, well, how do you get better with precepts? How do you uh, know, remember them scriptures when you're in the street teaching? And I'm going to hit you with something. Um, in Israel, there are some amazing speakers and eloquent orators who have uh, incredible abilities when it comes to bringing out precepts. And a lot of them can do it from memory. I'm not one of them brothers. I have a very bad memory. Okay. Um, the most I didn't give me, he didn't bless me with a, a really sharp memory. So I have to do other means and um, take other courses of action so that I can be effective when pushing the word. And one of those things that I do is I sharpen my swords. Okay. All right. I put my physical Bible to use. Okay. So in this video, I'm going to show you some techniques that I use um, that helps me pushing the word, helps me in classes, and it helps me with understanding. And it's uh, some exercises that I do and some techniques that I have that I want to share with you, Israel. Okay? So this video is about how to get better with precepts. And my first technique is going to be mark up your sword. All right? Bibles is not meant to be brand new. They're meant to be worn out. Your pages are supposed to be dog-eared like this. All right? It's supposed to be writing in this book. Okay? So what I do is I study, of course, but say I want to link scriptures together or I want to be able to make a powerful point in the street. What I'll do is I'll precept my Bible. So you see here, we're in the book of Deuteronomy 28, and this is verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. And right next to that verse, I marked a precept. Job 5 and 14. Let's go see what that says. Job 5 and 14. Okay. Bear with me, I'm holding the camera and turning these pages. So, Job 5 and 14 says, They meet with darkness in the daytime and grope in the noonday as night. That's almost the same thing that Deut look what you have there. Deuteronomy 28 and 28 says. So if I'm in the street teaching and I bring out Deuteronomy 28 and 28, my sword is going to lead me to Job 5 and 14 which says the same thing, all right? So now I have a precept. Say I'm looking for a powerful scripture or a key scripture. I'll draw in my Bible. That's a little skeleton key with some grapes. It's, it's, in other words, it's, it's notes to myself that this is a powerful scripture. Look what it says. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. That's a key scripture. That's that's like fine wine. So I put the grapes. OK. And then look what I have there. A precept. Part of my handwriting. But that's Revelation 15 and one. Let's see what it says. Revelation 15 and one. And I saw another sign in heaven. Great and marvelous. Seven angels having the seven last plagues for in them is filled up the wrath of God. You know what I mean? So why did I put that with that scripture? Say I wanted to make the point that the Most High will save you out of seven troubles. And then I wanted to make the point, but the enemies of the Most High's people will have seven troubles. Then I could jump to this scripture. All right? And you can make an exquisite point. This is, come, this is what I do in my Bible. I mark it up. Okay? Same thing with my Apocrypha. I love Sirach. Sirach is like one of my favorite books to read. And if you look at these pages... Precept upon precept, man. I got swords, meaning this verse is a cut. Okay? You understand? Precepts on the side. 
Precept upon precept upon precept. I got stars next to key scriptures. Right? Look at this scripture. I got stars next to it. So when I open my book, my eyes are going to run right to it. Do no evil, so shall no harm come unto thee. That's an important scripture to remember. So I put two stars around the chapter. All right? Now I have a system. There's a key. Whatever this is, it's a key scripture. Look at this. For at the first, she will walk with him by crooked ways and fear and dread upon him. Salakia, and bring fear and dread upon him and torment him with her discipline until she may trust his soul and try him by her laws. That's a key scripture because that's talking about how wisdom has patience with you when you first discover this word. There's another key. Be not ignorant of anything in a great matter or small. That's a key scripture. Y'all understand what I'm saying? There's another one with some grapes on it. What does this say? It says, but... What is commanded thee, think thereupon with reverence, for it is not needful for thee to see with thine eyes the things that are in secret. In other words, focus on keeping the commandments. And what do I have there? A precept. Psalms 131 and 1. So now my Bible is telling me a story because I've taken the time to mark it up. Psalms 131 and 1. What's that say? Okay. Some of y'all got these brand new naked Bibles, man. How are you going to use it? How is it a sharp sword? How is it useful to me? My Bible is useful to me. Look at this. Psalms 131 and 1. Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. Neither do I exercise myself in great matters or things too high for me. And, that, and what do you see right there? Sirach 3 and 21. Let's go back. That's a scripture saying, I'm not concerning myself with things too high for me. So Sirach 3 and 21, what's that say? But what is commanded thee, think thereupon with reverence, for it is not needful for thee to see with thine eyes the things that are in secret. Be not curious in unnecessary matters. You see how the Bible is telling the story now? I can jump from Psalms to Sirach, right? I got Proverbs 3 and 7 right there. What's that say? Now I got three precepts from one verse. Romans 12 and 16. I got four precepts for one verse. You see how my Bible is helping me push the word and how, how it's uh, helping me tell a story with scripture? Look at this. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. And look at that. That's taking me to another precept. Psalm 37, 23. Psalm 37, 23. What's that say? Psalm 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. You understand? So what happens is by marking up my Bible, I'm able to tell a story. Look at this key script. It's a key scripture. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. That's a key scripture. And I got precepts. Bing, bing, bing. All right. We don't have to get them right now, but I've taken the time to invest energy into my sword. And now my Bible has become extremely useful. Look at this. Mark the perfect man and behold the upright for the end of that man is peace. Matthew 5, 48. Why? Did, why? You know, I don't remember what I was thinking that night. Why did I put that precept there? Matthew 5 and 48. What's this say? Because we just left a scripture saying, Mark the perfect man. Look at Matthew 5 and 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Key scripture and a gang of precepts all the way down the line about being perfect. These are all scriptures about being perfect. Now, when you get to, I, I draw pictures of like a glass poured out. That's a sad scripture or um, a, 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 a somber scripture. You understand? A melancholy scripture. You know what I'm saying? Something sad for you to ponder on. Sirach 28 and 1. What's that? Now, now studying my Bible is actually fun. I don't need a lesson. I've made a lesson through investing time in marking up my sword. He that revenges shall find vengeance from the Lord, and he will surely keep his sins in remembrance. That's a sad scripture. Why did I come here? Because... If you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. You see how those link up? See how those link up? 
He that revengeth shall, shall find vengeance from the Lord, and he will keep his sins in remembrance. This is the, your father not forgiving you. Those scriptures go together. See how those precepts link up? Those are little tricks I use to precept my Bible. You know, I don't have a great memory. Sometimes I know one verse and it'll take me to other verses that I can't quite remember. For instance, Christ taught about uh, Christ taught this. That the enemies of a man will be of his own household. I can never remember where that's at. But I know that Micah prophesied it. So what did I do? I, I gave myself less work to do. I memorized when Micah said it. Which is short. Micah doesn't have as many chapters. So I can find it. I can rest my finger on it. Micah said it somewhere. And I'll be able to find it because I probably put marks on it. Aha. Uh -huh. For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter riseth up against her mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemy are the men of his own house. What's this right here? That's the precept I want when Yahawashai said it. So I didn't have to remember when Yahawashai said it. I just know that I remember that Micah said it and Micah can take me to it. And I use that technique a lot when I'm teaching in the street and I need a certain scripture. I, I'll remember other scriptures related to it and they'll bring me to the scripture that I want. You know, sometimes I'll do a, a chalice that's not all the way tipped over, meaning we're, we're in mirth. We swing in our glasses. It's just a happy scripture. Blessed is the man that hath a virtuous wife for the number of his days shall be double. I'm going to drink wine on that scripture. Y'all see what I'm doing, man? I'm making my Bible fun to study. Oh, there's a cut. What what that say? As the palate tasteth diverse kinds of venison, so doth an heart of understanding false speeches. So I know when you're lying. I know when you're lying. Just like I know the taste of a certain food, I know when you're lying. I know the, I know the, I know lying words when I hear them. That's a good cut. Um, this, is, this is a sad scripture. Uh, there is one that is wise and teacheth many and yet is unprofitable to himself. Damn. You know what I mean? Like you out there pushing the word, doing the work and <sighs> unbelievable. It benefited you not. You brought other people to the truth, but the most high ain't want you. And this is a happy scripture. You got the clouds, got a little light rays. The days of the life of a man may be numbered. But the days of Israel are innumerable. Y'all understand? Look at this, man. This is a sickle. That means that this script is a super cut. Oh, man. I can't give y'all all my precepts. Hold on, man. <laughs> hold on, hold on, man. Hold on, man. So listen. That's a technique I use to help me be sharp in the field. If I'm making a lesson, I'll mark my Bible and I'll have other supporting scriptures around the first scripture. So I only got to remember one scripture. And through my diligence and my energy that I put into my sword, it'll bring me to a whole bunch of other ones. Look at this one. We teach that Yahweh had an earthly father. Well, guess what? I already know that uh, Romans 1 and 3 is a cut for that. What does it say? It says concerning his son, Yahweh Hamashiach, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. You can't get around that. Don't even try that. But I memorize that scripture. But sometimes I just don't have it in me to remember the other scriptures that support it. And there they are all around. Prophecy. Prophecy. Apocrypha verses that coincide. Revelation verses that coincide. Other examples of it being said, prophecy. Other examples of it being proven, Paul's teachings on it. And this, prophecy, prophecy. These are scriptures that, you know, I put around the scripture that I memorized, see the little star? And then I can form my lesson. This is why you gotta take notes. Don't just watch videos for entertainment. Mark up your Bible and get precepts, man. So sometimes you're going to get challenged in the street and they, yo, but what about Romans 1 and 21? Oh, I got a precept there. So whatever you saying, 
I know what this scripture means and I can support my position. And I got a precept upon precept because I did my homework. OK, let me give you all some resources. Let me give you all some resources that y'all can use. Right. That y'all can use to increase your precepts. One of my resources is Biblehub.com. OK. And why do I like this website? Why? Because Biblehub.com has para parallel references. OK, let's get a Let's get a hefty scripture from the top of my dome. Let me think of something. Uh, do, 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 do. Hosea four and six. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Right. Well, that scripture says what it says. But what if I want to form a lesson around Hosea four and six? So I go to the top with the index right there. Right. Let me find my verse. OK, I'm going to press this button right here that says parallel. How's that going to benefit me? It's going to put all the different translations on the left hand side. Sometimes you need to know how other people's Bibles read so you can deal with it. OK, but we deal with the King James, of course, the, the immaculate translation from the Hebrew, Greek and Latin. And it reads, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy power. I will also forget thy children. Now, that's a sad scripture. So what I would do in my Bible, because I like to draw, I'll probably put a, um, a glass with wine poured out because it's a sad scripture. OK, but we all know that one. That's a basic scripture. Now, I'm going to show you something. Go back to my Bible. All right. And I'm going to pull it up. Hosea 4 and 6. Mercy. Let me, give me a chance. I got one hand. All right. Hosea 4 and 6. There's that scripture. But what do you see all around it? Precept to match that. Precept to match that. Precept to match that. Precept. Precept to match that. These are all scriptures that harp on the same subject. Now, am I just such a, a Bible wizard that I knew to get them scriptures? Probably not. I'm not even going to front like that, man. You know what I could do? I could use Bible Hub, go into the parallel section, and then there's an area on the right hand side that says cross references. Some of these are off, so you have to study. There's no way of getting around doing the work. OK, cross references, Hosea four and six accompanying scripture, Psalms 119 and 153. Look upon my affliction and rescue me, for I have not forgotten your law. Mm, it, it doesn't sound like it's an accompanying scripture, but this might not be the way the King James says it. Let me go check it. And then when I go check it. Consider my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget thy law. Now, didn't Hosea 4 and 6 says that you forgot my law, so I will forget your children? So what can I do? I can pull this as a counter scripture. This is how you're going to save yourself. Hold, hold on, Israel. Uh, Salaki, my phone rang. So this could be a counter scripture, right? For you to have a solution. See, now the Most High will deliver you if you don't forget his law. But if you forget his law, he will forget you and his children. So what am I going to do? Psalms 119 and 153. I'm going to come down to Hosea. Let me get it right for you. all I'm going to come down to Hosea 4 and 6. And I'm going to add that. Psalm 119 and 153. Hold on one second. My phone stay ringing. Okay, Salakia, so y'all. That'll be the last time. So you see now how... Hosea 4 and 6 could bring me to Psalms 119 and 153 for me to have a counter scripture, for me to have more to teach. All right. Come back in here. I'm going to go back to Hosea 4 and 6. I'm going to go to the cross references. Look at this one. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for lack of judgment. Damn, that's a cut. Let's go get it in the King James. Click it. Come over, come over here to the King James. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom, man. That's another precept to link up with Hosea 4 and 6, man. All right. Come back over here again. Look at this. Isaiah 5 and 13. 
Therefore, my people will go into exile for lack of understanding. That's what I want. Okay, that's saying the exact same thing. That's a great precept. Go. I'm going to go to it. Right. What does it say in the King James? Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Ain't that the same thing as what Hosea 4 and 6 is saying? That my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go to my Bible and I'm going to put Isaiah 5 and 13 right next to Hosea 4 and 6. But guess what? Guess what, y'all? I already did that. So you see how I'm using this website to help double my precepts? I find a scripture I know or I'm making a lesson and I got a verse that I'm centered around. And just by going to parallel at the top, just by clicking parallel and coming down to cross references, I can get a whole bunch of supporting scriptures, man. A whole bunch of supporting scriptures, man. Whew. This is a cut, Zechariah 11 and 9. Some of them just be too sharp. But what do I do? I always click them and read them in the King James just to make sure it's right. Don't get lazy. I'm not giving you a shortcut. I'm giving you a study tool. You understand, Israel? I'm going to give you another resource. Blue letter Bible.com. See, it already comes up. Now, this is a different type of study tool. And on Bible Hub, I already have my scripture and verse, and I'm looking for companion scriptures. But on Blue Letter, say I don't know the scripture and verse. Right? Say I want a scripture that says, um, but we were at one of my favorite scriptures. Um, but we shall do valiantly in the Lord. I don't know that verse. I know it's in the Psalms, but I don't know where it is. So I can type in valiantly enter. See how all the verses where that word is at comes up. Edom shall be a possession. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies and Israel shall do valiantly. Ooh, that's a great scripture. That's not what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Psalms 60 and 12. And, and look at that. Psalms 108 and 13 say the same thing. Wow. That's what I wanted. Though God through Yahweh shall we shall do valiantly for he it is that shall tread down our enemies. Now say I want to do a lesson about how the most high is going to fight our enemies. And this is my foundation scripture. I'm going to go to Bible Hub. All right. This is an exercise I do on my own time. OK, you brothers that have elders and teachers, they probably have magnificent precepts to give you. Always consult the elders. OK, but this is something that you should do on your time. This is an exercise for you to do that I'm sharing with you. Let, let me get it. Psalms. OK, 60. Uh -huh. And verse 12. Okay, there it is. Okay. Through God, we shall do valiantly, for it is he that shall tread down our enemies. Now, I want a whole bunch of scriptures that support that. Whoop. Cross references, fam. Look at this. Edom will become a possession. Seir will be owned by his enemies, and Israel will perform with valor. We know that's not the King James way of saying it. We click it. We go to it. KJV and Edom shall be a possession. We just read that one because it has the same word. But say we want one that's saying the same thing, but not necessarily with the same word. Look at this one. Psalms 44 and 5. Through you, we repel our foes. Through your name, we trample our enemies. Let's get that in the KJV. Through thee, we will push down our enemies. Through thy name, we will tread them under that rise up against us. That's magnificent. So what I'm going to do, go in my Bible, the scripture I can remember, the one I looked up and, and hunted for, Psalm 60 and 12. I'm going to show you real time me applying this. I bet you I do this at camp too. Psalm 60 and 12. 
Now, what did I put there? I put a lamp there, meaning that's a bright scripture. Through God, we shall do. It's one of my favorite scriptures. Through God, we shall do valiantly for he it is that shall tread down our enemies. And I'm going to add Psalms 44. And, oh, I already got it, y'all. Psalms 118 and 16. Psalms 44 and 5. What 118 and 16 say? Let's get it. Okay. Okay. Sorry for that. I'm um, out of focus. I got one hand. Okay. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. And I got 60 and 12 and 44 and 5. It, this verse also can take me to them two scriptures. You see how I marked up my Bible and made it useful to me? Look at this. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereunto according to thy word. Now, I like to use this scripture when they talk about baptism because baptism represents a washing. But I need supporting scripture. John 15 and 3. What that say? Some of y'all know it already. Let's get it. Let's get it for the people. John 15 and 3. Right? John 15 and 3. And it reads, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Now you see that? See how knowing one scripture about cleansing your ways helps me uh, with doctrine? Because the supporting scriptures are right there. And I'm not done, man. It's so many pages that need a mark. So I got to keep studying. I got to keep pushing myself. I got to keep listening to my elders. And when they give me a scripture, a verse that I like that they brought out, I go to and do my research and I search for accompanying scriptures. Now, some of y'all, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what you think, but this is not always going to be available to you. Okay. This is not always going to be here. I gave you two resources. Blue Letter to hunt for words and Bible Hub to hunt for precepts. OK, this is not always going to be here. OK, take advantage of technology and what Esau got up there and use wisdom to break down what's right and what's wicked and use it for the benefit of the nation and precept your Bible. I got I got a lot of work to do, man. See these naked pages. OK. I got one there. I got one there. What's that? Joel 1 and 14. Okay, that's a scripture about fasting. I got one here. And whosoever will not receive you, when you go out of that city, shake off the dust from your feet, for it's a testimony against them. That's Luke 9 and 5. I bet Matthew 10 and 14 say the same thing. You see why I got that precept there? Yup. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. See, this is what I'm saying. This is how I use my sword. Look at this. Precepts, man. Got a star right here. And blessed is he whoever shall not be offended in me. That's an important scripture to know. Bing, bing. Got a mark next to it. And then I got precepts for this. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. Well, guess what? These scriptures back that statement up. Malachi 3, 1, Luke 1, 76, Isaiah 43, Luke 7, 27. And this is how I support my understandings and how I edify the people at camp because I've done my homework before I went out there. So that's what I want y'all to do, man. Don't let your Bible just be brand new. Wear out the binding, man. Use resources that's available to you and sharpen your sword. All right, Israel? This is Brother Yahweh All. I hope this lesson helps out. Much love in your house, Shai. Uh, peace and safety to all the Israelites on the four corners of the earth, man. We the sons of thunder. It's our hearts praying desire for Israel that they might be saved. Shalom.